Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Now, first thing I'm going to say is sorry I haven't been posting lately. Um, a couple things have been going on, important things, so I've sort of just shifted YouTube in the background just for a little bit. Um, I will be posting some more videos soon. Road to my first dunk is still happening. A lot more episodes will be coming soon. But we finally hit 300 subscribers. Thank you guys so much, it means a lot. I always appreciate the support and I know this is just the beginning. I can't wait till we hit even bigger milestones till we get that 1000 uh, and then just go beyond from that. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd do a Q&A just because I haven't done one in so long. It's a bit easier to film rather than a full, you know, training vlog and I can just answer some questions which I haven't answered um, in a video before. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first question, how much can you increase your vertical without weights? Now, a lot of beginners ask me this just because they might not have access to a weight room and it's really hard to say how much you can increase. I say you can definitely do it. Um, especially when you're a beginner just because you're introducing your body to a brand new stimulus So obviously there's so much room for growth. You don't need weight straight away uh, with me personally I was be able to maybe go from a 21 inch vertical to a maybe a high 20 inch vertical um, Just off, you know practicing my jumping and doing some plyometrics uh, without any weight so it just depends on things like your genetics and things like that but I would say without weight you can increase a few inches but then there will, there will come that time where you will stall and for best results you will need to start doing weight training next question when did I start jumping and what did I do to improve it so I started jumping I was in the 10th grade so 2014 was when I started taking it pretty seriously um, I always sort of had that mini ring at home which I would just do my dunks on and I would, wouldn't even know like what most of the dunks were I would just have fun and then you know before I knew it my vertical was just increasing just from jumping alone um, so yeah that's how I started it was obviously a few years ago four years ago now so I've been doing it for quite a long time and yeah to improve it I just jumped for a while that's all I did I didn't know what plyometrics was I didn't know what the strength training was I didn't know about all these lifts I just jumped and then after maybe a few months uh, I started doing some plyometric trainings I think the first program I did was vert shock or something like that and then from there I started taking it more seriously started doing some weight training and that's when I really saw some major progress when I started doing my weight training what exercise is the best to increase your vertical or what do I personally like the best? So many to choose from, but if I had to choose one, I would probably say the hang clean just because you're working on raw power and it's a really good Olympic lift, really working on triple extension. And yeah, I think that just has the most carryover to your vertical. And for me personally, when I increase my numbers in the hang clean, my vertical tends to go up as well. So um, obviously it just depends on preference a little bit as well. But one exercise, if I had to give only one, I would say the hang clean. Um, even though I'm not doing it in my current program, sometimes I, you know, I take a break from it, but I would definitely recommend that exercise. Learn the form. It is an Olympic lift, so it's a bit hard to do, uh, but it's definitely worth taking the time to sort of learn it. How do I recover from plyo and strength sessions? That's a good question. So what I'll do is after a plyo, after a strength session, I'll make sure I always have a meal afterwards, um, something with a lot of carbs and then just to sort of replenish everything that I've lost um, or, or the energy that I've lost. And then I'll do a static stretch somewhat later in the day. So I might work out in the afternoon and then later on in the evening or maybe at night, I'll do a full static stretch, I'll foam roll, I'll ice. So that way my muscles are recovered, they're relaxed, and also my joints aren't too sore. Because a lot of times after high impact exercises, especially in plyos, when you're doing you know, your box jumps, depth jumps, my joints can get a little bit uh, sort of roughed up. So I like to ice those, make sure they feel good. And that's pretty much all I do. Um, I, yeah, just ice, foam roll, stretch, get a good meal in, and then just get some rest. Because maybe in the next couple of days I'll have my next workout, so I wanna make sure I'm 100% for that. Is it normal to see small decreases in my vertical? For sure, it will be pretty much impossible to you know, jump your best every session or you know, increase every session because at a certain point you will stall, you will have injuries, you know, it's inevitable, they will come. Um, the severity of the injury, it's hard to say, you, know, you might just have minor injuries, but you know, things like your energy and you know, just you, the slightest fatigue in your muscles can also affect that. So you, know, you can't jump your highest your max vert every session so you might have a max vert of say 35 inches 
some days you might only be jumping 30 inches. It's just a part of the dunk journey. Um, yeah, fortunately, you know, it sucks, but that's why we try and do as much as we can in our recovery to make sure we can't. As long as we do everything that's in our control, you know, our stretching, our foam rolling, uh, if it still happens, then we just got to sort of let it go, not let it get to our head, and the next session still go with 100% intensity. Um, if your vertical is just gone down and it's not coming back up at all for like a really long time, maybe a few months, I would really take a look at your diet, uh, your sleep, that could be a major thing, you might just not be recovering properly. So I would tune up diet, tune up sleep, make sure you're getting 8 hours, uh, getting enough meals in, getting enough carbs, protein, things like that, and then you should see your vertical go up. What advice do you have to treat jumpers knee? Okay, so I've done a few videos on this. Uh, just briefly, I will link a video in the description, um, but briefly, the main things I do is stretch, foam roll, ice, uh, I'm really big advocate of resistance cycling because that strengthens the muscles around your knee as well as the actual tendon. Um, and then going on a lot of walks, doing a lot of active recovery just to keep your body sort of uh, mobile so it doesn't get stiff and lock up. I think that's a really good thing, especially because it will help with flexibility and flexibility will help with jumpers knee. So uh, I like to stretch almost every day, foam roll almost every day and then I'll always ice, even if it's just like a upper body day or leg day, pretty much every day I'll try and get some icing on my knees and that's really helped me. I've gone from you know not even being able to lock out my knee to pretty much uh, you know, being able to lock them both out and almost dunking now. So um, it does take a bit of time, especially when you just get it. It's probably the worst at that point, but if you just be patient, uh, maybe even just take a couple weeks off from jumping when you first get it, just to sort of let your body catch up and then slowly ease back into your activities from there. Uh, that's probably the best thing to do. What are my one rep maxes for squat and deadlift? Okay, so for my deadlift, my estimated, because I haven't actually done it in a long time, estimated one rep max is 160 kilos. And for my box squat, I haven't even tested my one rep max before, but I would say it's around 135 kilos, maybe 140 kilos on a good day. But I will be testing that soon, especially with my new program. It allows me to do really heavy singles, so I'll be able to find out you know, what my one rep max is, so keen for that. How often do I train legs a week? Twice, so one will be a deadlift focus, one will be a box squat focused, um, and then you know, I'll add in my accessory exercises and plyo exercises on that day as well. How did I get better at throwing lobs? So lobs, even now, they're a little bit rusty, but they've definitely come a long way from where they were. And pretty much all I did to improve it was really just go out and practice throwing them. It sounds so stupid and just so boring, and it is, but it really does help. Like on my off days, I would just go out to the court and just practice lobs, trying to practice getting it to bounce and then land right in front of the rim. And you know, because it's an off day, it's not very taxing and also sort of a form of active recovery. So I'm kind of hitting two beds with one stone. I'm practicing my lobs and I'm getting my active rest in. And then when it's time for dunk sessions, it just feels more natural. The muscle memory is there and I can throw them a lot better. So I would suggest doing that. It might be a bit boring, uh, but it definitely helps. Okay, and very last question. What I do for rehab? Okay, so answer that. Um, how often do I rehab? And how do you rehab a very injured knee compared to light damage? Okay, so um, how often I rehab? Pretty much every day. Because even twice a day, I can try to try do twice a day because you can't really do it enough. Um, I think, you know, as much as you can fit in is gonna benefit you because knee rehab, it's gonna take a long time to sort of get that knee back to full health. So I really try to get as much rehab as I can. Um, typically I'll do one to two times a day. Uh, that's really all I can fit in. Uh, but I think that's sufficient. And the last part of the question, how do you rehab a very injured knee compared to light damage? Okay, so if it's a very injured knee and the case is more serious, I would probably get it checked out, um, take more time off and then I'd really start with a really small activity and then slowly, slowly increase. Um, and I'm talking about maybe five to 10 minutes of activity and then just go up from there very slowly in small increments. I'd take advice from my, you know, my physical therapist on what to do if it's very serious. Uh, you know, you don't want to make that even worse. Uh, but if it was something light, I would maybe just sort of uh, stretch foam roll ice and that might just be the cause, maybe not enough of that. So if that helps it, then you know, I'll just go from there. Uh, but yeah, that's probably how I treat a very light injury compared to a very heavy injury. That's it for the Q&A guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Sorry for the lack of posting, but if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. More videos on the way. 
turn on your notification bells and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.